So, Miss Bethany. Yes. So, did you do your um, your distance learning today? Yes, but it wasn't very. It was There wasn't a lot to do. Okay. So, did you have any trouble like logging in or? It was. Um, I just had. It was a Google Classroom assignment. On okay. My, I had it on my phone, and then I wrote my assignment on my Braille note. Okay, so you didn't actually like talk to anybody or No. Okay, are you are you guys gonna do that? Where they I think we might do it Thursday. Okay, are they gonna try to do it with the whole class in in participation together on Thursday? I I think so. Okay. I know they had some technical difficulties today. With Blackboard. Uh, yeah, it kind of crashed, didn't it? With everybody logging in at the same time. Yep. But uh, we decided to have, I'm going to talk more about it with, uh, about Obed and Jesse, but we decided to have you do it because you're so good at technology. Yep. Right? Yep. And I'm sorry, I have to do this. It's no, making me fine. crazy. <laughs> and I needed, needed to... something to do. Also. Yeah. Yes, you did. You seemed very happy this morning. Yep. Right? Yep. And so I'm glad that you can stay connected with your friends. Yep. And do some, you know, assignments, even if it is just kind of busy work. Yep. You know, and continue to work on your skills, like caring for your brother to some degree and mm -hmm. helping me out around the house, right? Yep. Yep. We have to kind of increase some of those skills that you already have, yeah. build on top of them. But boy, it is, is it ever challenging for our family yeah. to even just to get started because there's just so many, I don't know, everybody's having the same problem, but the logistics in this family are more complicated. You know, we always say that we're just like everybody else. We just do things a little differently, right, Bethany? Right. So this this time that we're in and this situation just kind of shows how much more complicated it is for us to do things, but we're still doing what everybody else is doing, right? Right. But we just, we need a little more equipment. We need to take a little more time. There's a greater learning curve, all that, right? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, we'll get there though. So after you do your class on Thursday, you'll have to let us know. I, can, I don't really want to film you doing it because I think it's a violation of the other students' privacy. Yeah. And that wouldn't be right. But we can always talk to you afterward to see how it went. All right. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> yep. I guess okay. David and I are the only ones in this house that's doing schoolwork. You are. And that is a great segue for me to go have a conversation with our friends. <laughs> yep. So distance learning as it pertains to Jesse, Obed, and even Abby is not, it's not very meaningful or beneficial to them. You guys, obviously those kids, those three kids can't really, they can't really access, you know, the classroom and the, and the, and the, or anything, the computer or anything, independently. And so what would happen is Mama Bear would be running around like a crazy person with those three kids logged in on different computers all at the same time doing completely different things. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, whatever they're doing, it's really going to fall on me to do it. And so I was having so much anxiety about this because it didn't make a whole lot of sense for me, you know, for, for those three kids. And, and I'm the kind, I'm, I'm like a major, like perfectionist and type A person. And, you know, I try to do everything right all the time. And I, I put way too much pressure on myself sometimes to, make sure that I'm, you know, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing and parenting them properly and giving them everything they need and all that. And, you know, and Joe finally one day, he just said, we're not doing it. We're just, we're, we're going to talk to the teachers and we're not going to do it. And all of the teachers were, were fine. They were in complete agreement and understood. And I think that I think what happens is there's like there's a legal issue because if schools are open even if it's online and virtual to the gen ed students and the general population then by law they have to provide the same opportunities to you know to our kids and 
so I, I think that the big thing is that they just want to make sure that, you know, they're not going to have any battles or anything. And they all seem to be kind of as relieved as I am because I don't think anybody could really figure out how to do that. I mean, how do you deliver these one-to-one -one therapies and services and things virtually to the, the kids? You, you just can't. And so... You know, with everyone being home, <laughs> here's what happens. Now, Jesse and Obed, you have to realize that each of them, they they get changed five or six times a day, okay? And, and I have to feed them, and we do the laundry and the bathing and all these things. And so the same reasons that stand behind why we can't do virtual school is has a lot to do with the same reasons that we don't do daily vlogging. I mean, you guys see little snippets of our lives here and there, but the reality is, you know, Joe is working full time in his in his job. He's doing it from home now, but he does have a full time career. David's upstairs finishing out his semester online. He has no problems at all. He's he's doing fine. He actually is enjoying it. And so and now Bethany's doing that. You see that we tried to get Hannah's, um, you know, Hannah's all recipes apps or she can do some more things and help me in the kitchen more independently and really with um, just getting a little bit of equipment and and an app set up for her she should be able to make recipes at home just like she does at work and in Hannah's case being 25 and being out in in the you know workplace when the when her bakery and her coffee shop is open um, she has what is known as an ISP the other kids all have an IEP, which is an individualized education plan, and Hannah transitioned into the workforce, and she has an individualized service plan. So she still has goals and, and things that she has to, you know, work on and, and, and get good at and all, so she needs to be doing some things too. For the most part, what we're what we've decided is that with Abby in particular, we're going to focus on those life skills. Abby, I have never been able to get her fully independent in um, in showering. I still have to supervise her. Uh, she's always had a hard time getting her hair clean, and you know, I'll just be honest with you. I mean, I have been doing too much for her for too long because sending her to school. I mean, it's important to me that she goes to school and she's clean, right? So I, you know, we're thinking that if we can end this quarantine with Abby being fully independent with her showering, then we'll have been very successful and that will go carry on with her throughout her life. It doesn't matter if she doesn't get her hair completely clean if all we're going to be doing is staying at home. And so she can she can practice and learn those skills as well as, you know, work on some of the things that she was doing at her workplace, like cleaning up and wiping down tables. Maybe I can get her to start doing some things in the kitchen. But we have, this has been a slow start for us. And I know that a lot of you can relate to this because, you know, we just... I, we just have been sleeping too long and staying up too late. And, you know, it seems like we just go from meal to, you know, to dressing, to bathing, to meal, to, you know, we're staying busy, but it's just, you know, mostly the laundry and the mundane stuff that we always do, having a hard time, you know, getting all that figured out. But but we'll uh, we'll get there. Just remember, you know, our kids are not... As far as education goes, um, they're really not on an academic track. Abby, Obed, and Jesse, even Bethany's not on an academic track. So, and they're and our our kids have all basically graduated from high school already. And Jesse was everybody else graduated, but Jesse was supposed to have graduated last year. And the only reason that she didn't is because she was the only one in her class. And so, you know, since she goes back until she's 22 in the same class, we have decided to just let her, you know, be a senior again this year. And so it's not it's not like it's the end of the world. We can do things at home. I, you know, we've got to, we've got to start trying to do a little bit more than what we've been doing. But Jesse and Obed, you know, if we focus on their communication skills and things like that and just keep Obed, you know, moving and do some 
therapeutic play and you know make sure they get fresh air and all that we'll be good we'll be good to go but um you know joe and i have for many years we have we have known that the time was going to come when our kids wouldn't be going to school anymore and and yet they still will be at home with us and so what do you do with that at that point in time and you know each year we go through and we have these discussions you know are we gonna go back are we just gonna you know go into like some therapy and some enrichment programs you know how are we gonna manage that and this year we're having a very serious discussion about that uh, we may or may not send Jesse and Obed back you know we have some concerns they're not able to keep themselves healthy and, and, and clean and all that. They require a lot of assistance. And, you know, every year that we send them to school, they come home sick with something, you know, over and over and over again. And so we're having some serious discussions here as to whether, you know, even in the fall, whether we'll even send those two back. It's too early to make a real a big decision. You know, we don't want to be, we don't want to just do anything too, you know, quick and off the cuff, but we've been thinking about this for a long time. So, um, so there's that. And, you know, the other thing that, that I always forget, that I always forget about us is that first of all, you know, we don't just have one or two kids at home and we just don't have, I mean, we have a whole house full of kids with with special and individual needs that go way beyond what I think most people really have to deal with combined with the fact and this is what I always have a tendency to forget is that Joe and I are not 25 years old anymore you know we're 62 years old and 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 it's it's getting harder for us we're still managing but for us to just say you know we're just going to you know, do things like we used to, and we're just going to, you know, do this and do that and do this other thing, you know, we hope that you guys can understand and, and have grace and mercy along with us if you think that we're not doing enough. We do everything. We stay very busy, and we do everything we can and everything that we can think of to serve these kids and make sure that they, you know, are, like I said, happy healthy, fulfilled, enriched, and that they have good lives. And one of the best things that um, we like to do with them is to take community outings, which of course we can't do right now. But I think that day will you return quickly, hopefully. And, um, you know, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. But you guys stay well and stay safe. And that's the update on how we're doing our our homeschooling or non-schooling or whatever you want to call it. And we'll all get through.